and as an investor. For that purpose, we set up My Micro Invest Finance, MMIF. And My Micro Invest Finance is a purely financial vehicle that is bankruptcy remote. And the way it works is that for every investment opportunity, we set up a compartment. This is an example of company E. It's a compartment that we create. And so when you, as an investor, you invest in a company, you don't go directly into the company, but you actually invest into this compartment. And this compartment represents the financial value of your investment, for which we give you so-called equity-linked notes. And interesting to know, this is really the foundation of our company. That's the way that we work. And it has been recognized by the, uh, uh, the legislator, because this system has also been now um, put into place into the new law on uh, crowdfunding. And it's quite interesting to know. So we are quite advanced in the whole thinking about crowdfunding and how to set up this financial vehicle. So what are the results? We were funded in 2011 and operations since about 2012. And the last uh, five years, we've been able to fund 62 companies, thanks to the help of 37,000 members, and we invested 36 million euros. Now it's fair to say, obviously, that the 36 million euros is not coming only from the crowd. So this includes the money invested by professional investors, including business angels and others. So there's only a part of it which is interesting to know. Now in the investment crowdfunding world, you do have a lot of different types of models. And the model that we opted for is a so-called co-investment with professionals model. And we kind of dub it the system of checks and balances. And how does it work? Well, basically, when we do a crowdfunding campaign, we ask the entrepreneurs to also look for professional investors. Even though it might be that the crowdfunding campaign is successful, if the entrepreneur is not capable of finding a professional investor, it's a failed campaign. But also the opposite, it might be that we can find a professional investor for a company, but they don't raise enough money by the crowd, then unfortunately the campaign is not successful in the stock. That's where it ends, and all the investors are really good. Another highlight of Microvest is the ability to write a prospectus. I guess you know the prospectus, if you know something about the financial world, IPOs and so on. Um, we can write prospectuses, and even more, we can escort them across Europe in 29 countries. That allows us to raise as much capital, in principle, as we want for a company. And maybe a little word about the VC funds. We have two VC funds, dubbed in Ventures 1 and in Ventures 2. And Ventures 2 is investing in companies that have a company goal according to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. I think that's quite interesting. And so that means that all the companies that we fund with the Venture Capital Fund, they also have to do a crowdfunding campaign. But not all the campaigns that you see on our platform are invested in by the VC. Just for you. All right. Um, Again, if you have any questions about us, how we work, etc., please come to our colleagues. We're very eager to answer all your questions. And I'm going to give now the floor to Sarah Kawa. She's our legal expert, and she's going to say a few words about the tax shelter. Thank you, Peter. Hello. So my name is uh, Sarah. I work at my business as a legal expert, and I'm, I'm really happy to be uh, to join you to, to speak about Tax Shelter, which is a great opportunity for both investors and entrepreneurs. So um, we start, of course, with a, a, a small introduction, then we explain what's the Tax Shelter and the tax advantage, and then we'll see, uh, in short, what are the main conditions to, to comply with. So, Back in 2015, where well, the new uh, the new Belgian government had one main objective, it was to boost uh, the economy, uh, to boost entrepreneurship and innovation, because it will create uh, jobs and it will uh, generate growth. So we can all agree that we have goals, but how do we achieve this? So <coughs> it's the idea to find out how to, to achieve this. They started from a very basic and simple paradox. 
On one hand, we have startups that are the backbone of our economy, and startups are difficult to attract new funds, and we all know that money is key for the creation of any business. And on the other end, we all know that we have the reputation to have lots of sleeping money on our savings account. So the solution was to mobilize the saving money we all have on our accounts to invest in the real economy, in the startups that will create the economy of tomorrow. So, we, one of the big uh, incentives to, to encourage people to invest in startups is, of course, uh, tax advantage. So, here we are. That's how we get to tax shelter. So, What's the tax shelter? The tax shelter basically is a tax reduction on your uh, income tax that you can get if you uh, invest in startups. So you can get between 45 and 30% of the amount invested in a, in a startup as tax return on your annual tax declaration. So uh, you understood that there are two kinds of uh, rates. So if you invest in an SME, you get 30% of investment back. If you invest uh, in a micro-entreprise, you get 45%. Why is it different? It's because micro-entreprises are smaller, and so the risk is bigger, so you get uh, a bigger incentive. So, for example, if you would invest a thousand euros in, uh, for example, below which we will here tonight, you will get uh, 450 euros as tax reduction so a payback from the tax administration. So, you could guess that, of course, there are a lot of conditions to comply with to, uh, for this advantage. So you have three types of conditions. Conditions related to the companies you invest in, conditions related to the investors, and conditions related to the use of funds. So for the conditions related to the companies, so we have seen that it's small companies, but it's, it also must be young companies, so the capital increase must take place within four years after the incorporation. Um, we do speak a lot about uh, startup tax shelter, but actually concern every company, um, and of course there are some exclusions to avoid abuses. So for example, um, real estate companies are excluded because uh, the aim of real estate companies is not to create jobs, and uh, we must uh, keep in mind that that's the target. And every company can raise up to 250 euros, um, 250,000 euros uh, under the mechanism of tax shelter, so they can raise more, but only this portion will be applicable for tax shelter. Then we have conditions related to the investor. So the tax shelter is applicable for private investors, so person physique, natural person. So it's not applicable when you invest via a company. So just for the one who knows, there is a similar mechanism for the audiovisual sector, tax shelter audiovisual, and in that case, it's only for companies. And so this is a big uh, difference, because the, the aim was to, uh, <coughs> to mobilize the saving accounts, so it's for private persons. Every person is entitled to invest under 1,000 euros per year under the tax shelter, so it's per year, every year you can start again. And so the maximum tax reduction you can get uh, annually is uh, uh, 45,000 euros. You cannot uh, hold more than 30% of the company's equity, and you must keep the shares in the company for four years. And then third uh, kind of conditions is the use of funds. So, of course, since the, the point is to use the money to, to generate growth, uh, it means the money uh, invested under tax shelter cannot be used to distribute dividends and stuff. So, it may seem complicated, but my friend is here to assess, of course, if the company is tax shelter. So, we do verify it before putting it online and, uh, and <coughs> presenting it as a tax shelter. We also verify that the company uh, that the companies comply with the conditions for four years, and we provide, of course, the old support related to uh, tax declaration. 
So basically, that's it. So you are more than welcome to contact me via email if you have other questions. And you can also download the ebook available on startupaction.org, uh, which is quite complete and uh, interesting uh, information about action. Well, guys, now the next question is, um, what's next? And next, we have the pitches of some entrepreneurs. And this will happen in two steps. The first steps, we will have four entrepreneurs um, introducing their business for you to invest in those businesses. And the second step is that we have another three entrepreneurs, another three who successfully run a crowdfunding campaign. So it's kind of testimony. But to introduce our famous entrepreneurs, I will first ask you to know what this is. Pillow, okay? Do you all have a pillow below you or next to you? Take it. Okay, take it. And smash your neighbor like this. Yeah. That's great, great, great. And the reason is that with a pillow, you will no longer sleep. You will we wake up by the pillow, and this is our first entrepreneur like this. Um, so you will never sleep with a pillow, because pillow is no longer a pillow like, like you know, but there is another signification for that. So we have actually four entrepreneurs, and you will see that not all of them are startups. We are growing together with our entrepreneurs. So at my micro invest, we help, we help all of them. The first one, the startup, uh, the pillow one, is the first one, and then you will see that you will actually grow together with entrepreneurs, and we will end up with a very, very large entrepreneur, which is very known and well established for more than 20 years. Um, so you will have a full range of possibilities for investment, but first start with the pillow to wake you up when you need to take your medicines. might have a problem because the, the, the pillow is working but the technique is still sleeping. Thanks to the treatment plan I'm following. The problem is, 
I need to take medication daily. I have two kids who need help with their schoolwork and a full-time job. So it becomes one more thing to remember and to potentially forget. I use the alarm on my smartphone to remind me when to take my pills. But I still end up forgetting sometimes. It scares me to know that I could forget my medication. I receive calls very frequently from patients who um, are afraid to have forgotten to take their medical prescription. Lots of studies show that uh, only half of the patients who have chronic diseases, such as high blood pressure or heart diseases, take their medication every day. I also have very frequently uh, young women who call me uh, because they are afraid that they have forgotten to take their birth pulse control. Patients can only get the optimal benefit of their treatment if they take the full dosage they've been prescribed. So as pharma industry, we are constantly looking for new solutions to help them in following their treatment plan. In this matter, the biggest obstacle we face is simply memory. In roughly 30% of the cases, people simply forget to take their pill. Pillow taps into a massive market of millions of people looking for lasting solutions to their problem. If you care about their health and their well-being, please consider to join us and invest in our company. <laughs> So here we go. Hi. Is this better? Sure. Yes. Thank you. So it's a presentation of Pilo. Thank you for it. So you get a chance to see me in real now. Um, so basically, my name is Tejas so, Bapa. It's an honor for me to introduce stress to you. Um, I'm going to start by a personal story. Um, three years ago, my, my wife had a stroke. So for those of you who don't know what a stroke is, it is in French, accident vasculaire cerebral. This is my wife. And um, actually, my wife, she's fine. She's there, and uh, she's fine because <clears throat> she's taking the treatment every day to make sure that uh, it will not go again. It's a problem. And <clears throat> when she was back from the hospital, our family slowed down get back to this routine. And uh, we were preparing the dinner together. Uh, to, to and she just turned to me and said, did I take my pills today? And at that particular moment, I realized that um, even with the fear of relapse of the stroke, and even with programming a, a smartphone to remind to take the pills, she was still possible for her to forget to take the pills. So, I don't know if you have uh, in your know, surrounding people that do have to put over critical treatment, but probably it sounds familiar to them. Yeah. And um, for all patients who are um, taking uh, critical um, treatment, this kind of situation will occur in the case. And there is a reason for that. And I would say it's quite normal to forget. So it, it, it may surprise you that I'm saying that, but the, the truth is that our brain um, is extremely bad at managing repeated, repeated tasks. Our brain hates routine. So um, when, I'm, when I consider this situation, I was thinking, okay, 
what can I do to solve this, this problem? And how can I make sure that finally medical treatment could be with my wife all day? And I came to this uh, idea to say, look, one object that we have with us all day long, and I could tell you that we are a large number of people in this situation. This month I've been communicating five billion people on Earth are using a smartphone every day. So this is quite large. And therefore, I come to the conclusion to combine the medical people with a smartphone. It's simple and extremely efficient to address the situation where people, in fact, are not in the position to take everything because this is so nice. In a room, in a bathroom. You have your medication with you all day long. So it comes with a with a hack that allows to manage the treatment in a very classical way. Reminder, the app also has to, to confirm that the, the treatment has been taken and it gives you some reports to measure how you follow your extremely interesting doctors. Let's have a look from a business point of view. Um, there is plenty of investor. I'm pretty sure that these uh, arguments are, are telling something. So first of all, the market is extremely large. In the US and the EU, uh, we are around about uh, 58 million customers. Well, directly concerned by the problem, and do have the proper iPhone. Then we have a high value product, low manufacturing cost, with a robust selling price, which is interesting. And then the last point is that this is a growing market. So every year there is 5% more of clinical patients. So where we are today, uh, the product design has been completed. The app development is in final stage. We aim to uh, translate the app in four different language. And then there is a patent, which is extremely important to secure our investment. So the root point is covered by the patent. So the last point would be why invest in insurance? So what's the purpose in fact, of your investment? Um, it will support the manufacturing process today. We are ready to start to manufacture. We need to fund. We have a clear market uh, uh, penetration strategy. And in this manner, I am working in the pharma industry since uh, 50 years. So this will be uh, crucial to uh, lead successfully the commercial strategy. And then we are already ready to uh, expand the product portfolio. That's my exit strategy, because I guess that you, you want to know how you could get your money out of my company. Um, so we are considering two options. Um, the first one is to run a single investment run, quite short, in short time, 20 to uh, 80, 80 months to 24 months, made by an established PC, venture capital, to support the growth of the company. Option B would be to um, Open the capital to a pharma company. There is already some discussion that the clearly show interest in the product. So we have different uh, options to uh, ensure the exit strategy. So basically, that's it for today. Thank you, Regis. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, uh, if you still have some questions, you have another four minutes to raise your hands and uh, ask some questions to Regis. About the business, about the exit strategy, about the financials, anything? Question? One, one question over here. Yes? Hello. What's the, the, part, the most important functionality that you plan for the future? Is it going to be just uh, taking into account how many pills will be taken, or you plan to make a matchmaking platform to connect patients with the doctors to make it much more sophisticated? Because for the growth, it's needed to need to see the, what's, what's coming. Just a simple update. Yeah, okay. So, the first target is to install the product and the brain and the brand, surest, in the mind of the first large people, medical patients. 
Um, we have the very first version of the app and the possibility to develop, to connect with different software, but there is so many options, okay? At the moment, this is too early. But I want to first to to here, right? the growth and make That's the case. evidence that there is a need for, there is a customer for that, and then oh, we're going to find it's the best way to generate No. <laughs> there is also the product, physical product, there is also a customer that say, we don't want to use that for a little reason, but we want to use it for lifestyle reasons. And this could be also a very interesting market. We still have the time for another one question. Yes, no, no, yes, yes, no. Well, it will be a no. Thank you, ladies. Thank you so much. Where's your pillow? Can you forget your pillow? Take it again. Take it again. Because the next step is after smashing your neighbor, you can just pat your neighbor like that. Okay? Well, that's that's a very good care. And and well that's that's introducing the, the next the next entrepreneur tonight. Um, is actually a place where you can centralize everything you need to care for yourself. And it is called self-care. Ladies and gentlemen, self-care. I hope we figure out the, uh, the audio problems in the meantime. I think we are in the output of the Ziekten zijn vermijdbaar door zelf meer inzicht te krijgen in je eigen gezondheid. Zelfcare is een platform dat mensen in staat stelt om juist meer te gaan te nemen over je eigen gezondheid op te maken. Dus mensen dat zelf willen. En daar wil zelfcare voor zorgen dat we met z'n allen er ziek worden en langer de gezondheid hebben gedaan. Een grote uitdaging als het gaat over gezondheid is om de inzichten die je opdoet om te zetten in nieuw gedrag. Als expert op het gebied van gedrag zorg ik erbij zelf voor dat de inzichten die je opdoet uiteindelijk resulteren in een betere gezondheid. Om dit voor elkaar te krijgen doen wij drie dingen. Als eerste sluiten wij aan op werkbonds en sensoren van alle leverfossiels. Daar voegen wij medische intelligentie aan toe. En als derde zorgen wij voor de privacy van de gebruikers, voor de beveiliging van de data, want die data is van hen en niet van ons. Okay. Ja, dus de founding father van de geneeskunde heeft zo gezegd veel van de, de wereld die zich niet heeft. Die is de wereld die is die zich heeft. Daar is het doorheen de jaren volledig beschuldigd. Als ik vandaag een Felix pakje verstuur voor de man dat ben dat perfect als hier. Hier doen hier zeven. Maar mijn patiënt weet ik absoluut niks. Dat is waar de technologie de belofte heeft om de wereld heel te veranderen. Dat hebben we gaan toelaten om de patiënt meetbaar te maken en te capteren hoe zijn omgeving en hoe zijn levensstijl eigenlijk invloed heeft om te verhinderen dat hij ooit ziek wordt en we hem kunnen gaan coachen om hem gezond te laten blijven. Dat is wat we ooit zijn geweest in het oude China, waar de arts werd betaald zolang de mensen in het dorp gezond waren. Zelfcare is in mijn ogen een de eerste platformen die gaan toelaten om terug naar dat soort wereld. Sinds 30 jaar heb ik sarcoidose. Dat is een uh, ontstekingsziekte waarvoor helaas geen genezing mogelijk is. Zo lang ben ik ook al op zoek naar manieren om zelf de gevolgen van sarcoidose in de hand te houden. Want ze zijn elke dag van uur van Zelfcare heeft mij geleerd wat de samenhang is tussen mijn gedrag, mijn eetgewoontes, mijn slaapgewoontes, mijn manier van bewegen en mijn welbevinden de dag. Uh, en na alle data die verzamel ik op een, op een dashboard en ik leer wat de beste momenten zijn om bijvoorbeeld te nemen. En het resultaat daarvan is dat ik fitter ben, energieker ben, meer controle heb over hoe ik me voel en hoe ik daar functioneer. Zoals ik Koen al eerder vertelde, gaat de gezondheidszorg van morgen drastisch veranderen. De belangrijkste verandering is dat jij meer regie krijgt over jouw gezondheid. Bedrijven investeren vandaag heel veel geld in 
levenstechnieken en toepassingen die het mogelijk maken om meer te meten en monitoren over jouw eigen gezondheid. Zelfcare heeft een systeem waarmee jij tijdelijk signaal opdoet, zodat jij dreigende ziektes kunt voorkomen. Daarom hebben we jou te besteden om dit al in 2017 waar te kunnen maken. Thank you. First of all, I want to thank um, my microinvest to give us the opportunity to uh, present our company. Uh, my name is uh, Tom Sievers and I am the co-founder of the Self-Care And before we start to realize uh, our group, uh, some things, things, events happen uh, before we start. The first thing is, I met Jeroen Cornelis. Jeroen Cornelis is the co-founder of our software, and he is, for more than 10 years, he's already um, tracking all medical equipment that make it possible to do self-management and self-diagnosis. Um, and he told me also something. He told me that um, in the early 50s, we had a uh, mainframe. A few uh, years later, we had the uh, PC. Then we have the, um, the, uh, the laptop. After the laptop, we have the tablet. After the tablet, we have the smartphone. So this is also happening within the medical sector. The big equipment we needed to follow what the signs of your body. They were 10 years, 15 years ago, they were very expensive and very big. But they are getting smaller and smaller. For example, here in my pocket, I have a device. With this device, I can uh, make an ECG of my health. Now, at this moment. So, we have all those equipment, they're getting smaller and smaller and affordable, and they're getting more and more accurate. Now, at this moment. So we have all those equipment, we get them smaller mm -hmm. and smaller. The second thing that happened, and then again before we started with self care, was the next infographic. This infographic told me that it is the most of our diseases, more than 60, 70 percent of all diseases, if it are incidents or chronic diseases, are avoidable. They are preventable. The most just are by more than just by learning to read in your own body. There are enough signals in your body who can alert you that there is an upcoming disease. Even if it goes about a heart attack. There are building blocks generated in your body that start at a certain time and they will grow and grow and then you will have the incident. All healthcare all over the world is focusing on repairing the damage, but it's not focusing on uh, alerting people that building blocks could be el uh, eliminated. And this is also the third uh, aspect. We met Kunkas, and Kunkas wrote a book, Never Sick Again. Now, this is a little bit exaggerated, but we can for sure, we, as we all sit here, we can for sure avoid 30, 40 percent of all diseases we, are thinking, uh, we can think about uh, diabetes, uh, a heart attack, uh, dementia, uh, but also uh, the flu, etc. So we can see the uh, event of uh, prevent those uh, illness when we monitor our body at the certain times. And Kunkas told us something else. Kunkas also told us that the medical schools of today are focusing only on repairing the sickness. But they are not focusing on the other things that can be the, um, the cause of, the, of our disease. And these are, for example, all factors that also influences of us for becoming sick. And that's what we put together. Within self-care, we combine, we combine uh, all those aspects in one platform. So you, as an individual, are being able to follow your own and to monitor your own, uh, your own body. So Egido Gazelle, learn us to read the book, 
Self-care will learn you to read your body. And if you can read your body, you are uh, at the same level playing field with the doctors. For now, today, everybody here sitting is a little bit of a loser or is a little bit of a dummy uh, when we talk to a doctor. Because the doctor, they have a monopoly and they are the holy grail because we are sick and I go to the doctor and he can tell me everything. But in the future, when you monitor lots of vital signs, then you can have a, 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 a good talk with your doctor. The, the doctor will diagnose the quicker and the doctor will also get you the right therapy even, uh, even uh, more fast so um, the incidents will, uh, will not occur. And this is all about the fragmentation of the market. The market that we, that we are uh, in, the market is a market of a $150 billion market. There are many stakeholders in the market. And uh, stakeholders in the market, they protect their, their business. All e-health, we talk a lot about e-health, but all e-health is just helping uh, in the market the people to stay and to, to cover their own market. There is no position for the patient. The patient isn't uh, uh, a stakeholder uh, in, uh, in, in the market today. Self-care will support everybody to be uh, a stakeholder in the market, to cover their own market. There is no position for the patient. So this is the conclusion of self-care. So, so you will become in the driver's seat and you will have a level playing field together with your, uh, with your doctor. It's all about the prevention, prediction, DNA, etc., uh, personalization, bringing together traditional healthcare. We are boosting the traditional healthcare, so it's going to become more efficient. Thank you so much. So please clap your hands. And I would like you to leave the floor without the opportunity to answer to the questions from the audience, if any. So you have the opportunity to ask some questions. Yes, one over there. I don't know if I dare to pass the mic. Uh, my name is Karan Heather. I represent IT company. Uh, my question is, uh, like you mentioned, that uh, your plan is, the company plan is to replace the, the pharmaceutical or the healthcare industry, like the doctor and hospital. But like in there, in that market, there are specialists, but for end user, they don't understand biology or the medicines or diseases. How is it uh, possible for the end user to know about his disease in, in more detail by you? Okay, for, first, thank you for the question, good question. Uh, but we are not replacing the traditional healthcare. We are only helping the traditional healthcare. When you go to the specialist, you will have your own report, what you have measured. Uh, years ago, so he can um, see what is uh, important and what is relevant to make a good diagnosis. So the only thing we do is making the traditional healthcare sector more efficient and, uh, and that there will be uh, less uh, people uh, become sick. And, and you also get, uh, uh, you can ask an, uh, on your doctor, what do I have to measure at home? Uh, in case of uh, nothing happens uh, to me. And then you can start measuring and then you can use the devices. The very last question. Hello, me again. Uh, my question is again about your future plans. Uh, you will collect a lot of personal data from each patient. It's okay. Do you plan to, let's say, find a specialist uh, who is able to build the algorithm to analyze this data and not only to, to give some dashboard with some raw data, but based some conclusions for the patient, for the end user. Yeah, for sure, very good question. Uh, and uh, the answer is in uh, one of the sheets. So for sure, there's gonna be a big data. And the data is owned by, not by self-care, and not by the companies, and not by the device company. The data is owned by the end user. And if uh, somebody uh, wants to pay money, for this data, the part of the money will return to the end user because you're going to have, um, uh, uh, when you follow your treatment, you're going to be, or you could be rewarded uh, to follow this treatment. And this, this is what you meant. So the future uh, investment is, of course, artificial intelligence, so we can help everybody to understand their data. Um, the second thing is the branding, of course. 
of the market and then do the international rollout. We have already customers, paying customers in Holland, and now we are starting uh, to develop uh, the product in Belgium. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now I have two mics. Hopefully I will check mine. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. So for the next one, you will not need your, your pillow. Um, and the next one is actually a, a good learning point for us as my micro -invest. The next one is a specialist in media. So hopefully it would find something to solve or sound problem. And I think he has a very good idea for that. The next one is a professional of screening and media. Um, and he will tell you what it is. Now, ladies and gentlemen, clap your hand for screening media. Don't roll the video right away, but in one second. Yes, so uh, we do video, so I'm quite used to it, and we do video without sound. You will see that in two minutes in the, or in one second in the video. I'm going to show you uh, what we do, because I think the, the images we just made, uh, I think two weeks ago, are quite self-speaking. In two words, what we do is we do video installation in retail in Belgium, and we use this video to communicate the retail messages, of course. And we are quite unique, and I will have one slide on that, uh, because we also use part of the, the airtime to uh, uh, incorporate external announcers. I will show you that in two minutes. So, but basically, we are about video, and as the song doesn't work, listen to me, let's go. So, we are now based in Louvain. We were here uh, in this office like uh, still six months ago. Uh, so, we are based in Brussels and in. Uh, this is one of the screen we do, and you see you are at the cashier and you have within a Belgian market. If you can pause one second, could you pause one second? Uh, we just so we use at the cashier uh, video screens where we advertise for the retailers, but also for external uh, person. If you can roll back two seconds, I will tell you where we, we go. Yes, there. And pause, yes, right here. That's what we do since six months. So it's even uh, one step further. On top of what we do at the cashier desk, we integrate within the shops uh, nice screens and we manage all the content. So we are able to manage the technical aspects and the content. And now we can go to the end. I will try not to stop. You will see the team. So this is the studio. We have uh, three people working on administration and studio creating content. This guy is a sales guy. It does not have a big screen. Uh, you see the roll packet, you will see that uh, soon. And based in Lovanova, I think there will be no more real images of shops. This is a picture of the network, you will see it in two minutes. But uh, on the screen, we have already 150 shops, so I will uh, come back on that again. But we are a startup, that's what I say there. But we are also somewhere an established company because we have been active in the market since five years. Uh, in this form, and I think there is one more image. Yes, the two main clients you have seen them. Uh, you saw before images within the Lays, and this was an image within a Carrefour. So I think when you live in Belgium since at least two weeks, you have probably been to one of these two chains. So that's the story uh, in image. It was really important to show you. Now I have only five slides, so I'll do it in one minute. And the shortest I am, the more you will invest. You can pass them, I'll tell you. So the first thing is, I, I've already shown you on, on, the, on the message, so that's the next time. What do we do? Or what do we do today? It's quite easy. We install and we manage a full video uh, chains in the source, and we have 500 screens. And you can move already to the next ones. We have these 500 screens within 150 shops today. And the reason why I'm here today is that the good news for you as an investor would be that with this footprint, we are already profitable. But today, this represents only, let's say, there's 15% of the available market for us today. There are still many shops which are not equipped with video. This is where we are. You see us quite present in Brussels, uh, here in Wallace Moment. This is an old picture, so now we have to add it to there. But really, the goal of the, the crowdfunding campaign is to enable us to grow the network and at least double it 
in uh, three years. And the good news is you see the pictures that was uh, two or three weeks ago, 150 shops. And this quarter, so these three months, we are adding 20 new shops. So some of them will be here. There will be three here. So already, if I tell you that my goal is to grow by 40 shops uh a year, the minimum goal, we have done 20, or we are doing 20 right now between January and, and February. We can move to the next one. The, the strength of the model, it's also for those who know, there is nobody from big retailer here. And I can explain in two minutes a bit more in detail, but the strength that we work with big retailers, the advantage also is, you know, if when we work, uh, you work with these guys that usually they have big, uh, frame contracts are good contracts that are renewed every four years and the change really is that we don't work directly with these guys but more with the franchisee market when you see delays open seven on seven that means usually it's a franchisee because if it's a real delays it's not open every day and careful market you see group mesdac which is a franchisee of uh, careful also so these are our main partners but the goal of these partners is to reach the local announcers that you just saw and we have today 800 active clients we can move uh, the capital increase as i said uh, the goal is to uh, create more clients and today we've done 20 new shops and on average you must know that every new shop that we had allows us to add uh, around 10 customers, so paying customers that will use the network on top. And this is where we make most of our revenues. Uh, that's the next slide. That's the dual model. Uh, the, the revenues that we make is roughly one third from the shops and two thirds from the announcers. And these are the typical announcers we have. So we don't talk today to Unilever or to BNP. We talk to local businesses, insurance company, real estate companies. Uh, uh, car dealers and uh, these are the, the clients we work with but really we have a dual model we get a lot of revenues and profits from the retailers and we add on top of that uh, a good uh, a good pile of uh, revenue from uh, local advertisers that's basically what we do and the goal and the reason to invest is really that with uh, the, the, the goal of 200k that we are looking for we have already secured 100 from a professional investor so with the crow now we are looking for an additional uh, 60 to 80 up to 100 we'll see uh, that will give us the opportunity then to really uh, kick off the growth and really important to know because it was not mentioned it we are still in the pre-campaign phase we just finished all the pre-work one week ago so today, if you go look on the site, you don't find us yet, but you will receive an email with a special link where you can already invest if you want. But the campaign will only, only start what, in two weeks, probably. Today, it's a, a premiere for you. Voila. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, that was the speech from the pitch from Screening Media. And uh, like you said, indeed, all the information are available on my MicroInvest website uh, for the first two uh, invest uh, two first two pitches, and for the last two they will come soon because actually there um, you have um, a campaign coming soon on the website. But you will receive anyway a deep link with uh, all the information attached in it. Um, from uh, my micro invest in, in the coming uh, hours. And if you receive the good link, you can already invest. Huh? You don't yeah. have to wait two weeks. <laughs> that, that's already the good word. Uh, so, we still have another five minutes for the questions. Um, yeah, we have already two. Well, retail is always generating questions. That's good. Yeah. My name is Uptun Latif. Uh, my question is about uh, the screening media, which is already visible uh, in many stations, airports, and uh, many other places. How it is different from that advertising company? And do you have that uh, competitors also? And how you can brand your product? So you mean, oh, we are different from companies who are active in airports or in stations, huh? It's completely different model. Okay, I think it's quite different as a model. I think the, the if I was today a, a national uh, marketing manager in a big company, what I would love to do if I had to advertise would probably to use the network that Clear Channel and uh, the co-are managing. And the best ones are in the Belgian railway stations. 
the strange thing, if you know the media industry, is that usually they are not really sold when you go to the subway here in Brussels, you look at the Delco uh, screens, you will see a lot of what is called co-marketing or semi-public uh, stuff. So it means that today the big companies are still relying on classical uh, media or classical print media rather than real digital. And of course, if it's you talk Deco and, uh, and Clear Channel and they start to have like 50, 60 screens per city, we will never compete with them. The advantage we have is that where we are present are in the big retail markets of the smaller cities most of the time. And so I believe that we have the, the place which receives the, the, the biggest crowd of, of the city. Typically, the, the example I like to give is we have some ref uh, as a shop. You have two big shops in the, in the city. We have the two and you have 30,000 people uh, coming through the shop uh, every month. So today, if you are a local announcer in some bref, we are the right place. If you are Unilever, you are welcome, but we are too small for, for you. But we might be big enough if we, we grow. But really, the market today, stations and airports, is a national market, and we are more local players. Still another one question. One minute for one question. I had someone here. No? Yeah. Yes. It was the same question. Yes. Another one? And what is the strategy for segmenting That's a good question because uh, you, you have seen first that we have two types of clients. So for the segmentation, the first uh, goal is always to get the, the retailers. And there we work mostly today with uh, franchises or independent uh, shops. But we have good opportunities in the future. We are working on them now to work also with national retail chain. So for us, anybody who has a shop more than 600 square meters and more than 20,000 people, we are interested to work with them. That's on the shop side. And on the local side, it really works geographically. So I would love to say we work first on stations and on gas stations, and then we will work on fines. But the reality is that we, we go where the shops are and we go around the shops. So the segmentation, the local segmentation is really, really local. And that's why the bigger we are, the more coverage we will have to reach uh, companies. We saw on the first slide, there are still some places where we are not present. But for the rest, Amazing. I would say that anywhere in Belgium, if you are not further than 15 kilometers from one of our screen, but in Belgium, sometimes 15 kilometers is still a lot. So we need to have more shops to be really bigger and more, we have a national coverage. Does that answer your question? Thank you. Thank you very well, much. Thank you. Please clap your hands. <laughs> so now, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the, 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 the big investment. So we are talking about a company which is no longer a startup. It's not even a scale-up. It is much more than this. So we started with a startup from Belgium, another one from the Netherlands, which is actually entering into the Belgium. We have a nice example of an ex-startup being already present in the entire Belgium. And now we have a nice company, which is actually targeting to cover the world. Um, and this is, this is really something else. So we are talking about um, a, um, a company which is actually one of my favorites, and I will tell you why. I spent 14 years of my life here above uh, at BNP Paribas uh, in the old industry. Um, and today, since um, I think two years, my name is Alex, Alex Uta, and I'm working for uh, my microinvest because I decided to do something a bit more disruptive. And actually, um, if I had to uh, opt for a kind of, you know, what we are doing in, in, in large companies, we are, we are always talking about uh, doing things together and trying to create a, a good team spirit and things like this. So if you see what those guys are doing, you will probably understand that they are disrupting a market of sleeping companies. Ladies and gentlemen, please clap your hand for Herculean. Wow, <laughs> that was my pitch. <laughs> Hi, my name is Eve. I'm the founder of uh, Herculean. 
I'm deeply humbled to be here for you. I'm here with some people of our team, Inge, co-founder, and a few youngsters. Glad that you guys are here. Um, it all started in 99, so we're not a startup. I wish you guys all the best, and it will happen for sure, and I love all your stories. It all happened in 99 as a crazy dream. Um, we kept it as a hobby during our corporate career. Inge is a lawyer, I'm a mathematician, I'm a technology guy. Grew, it grew, it grew, totally out of control. Um, without having a big plan, it just happened. Uh, and lots of customers started to join and everybody loved it and they brought new customers and we started making profits, etc., etc. And in 2012, we said, you know what? We have this great company here and we both are doing the rat race in the corporate world, uh, in the BNPs and the whatevers. Um, let's take the plunge. That was the, one of the first years of the recession. We didn't really realize that uh, what it meant, uh, a recession. But anyway, we did it and we started. And five years later, that's today, we are here to ask for your help. Well, not for your help. So we ask for your support uh, because we are about to write the next chapter. And you'll see in the Herculean history, I'll come with my microphone there. So everybody can hear it, maybe? Ah, it's on the HDMI cable. Okay, good luck with that, guys. We are the Sportainment and Corporate Wellbeing Platform with three business units, Hercules Trophy, Hercules Projects and Hercules Academy, and own offices in Belgium, New York and Dubai. <laughs> Hercules Trophy is our flagship product. It's the coolest corporate team challenge on the planet, where hundreds of companies compete against each other in 12 unique challenges, and no athletic skills are required. And we need you to join us. Based upon this know-how and years of experience, we have developed tailor-made active Hercules projects. Like, for example, the Deloitte Trophy, the Flare Games, and the Jaguar Land Rover Days. We firmly believe that happy employees are productive employees. That's why we created Hercules Academy, with a unique corporate well-being approach, and four modules. Mental, nutrition, physical, and social. Are you ready to write the next chapter in the Herculean history with us? As the Herculean business is now proven in several cultures and several countries, we are now ready to scale up. That's why we started a crowdfunding campaign, so you can help us grow in several countries. Why would you invest? Well, it's very simple. We have an amazing team. It's all based on a proven Belgian quality concept, and we have the IT platform to actually achieve it. So, are you ready to help us write the next chapter in the Herculean history? totally different business than a startup yeah so it's also very weird that we are going for crowdfunding yeah because we are capitalized you will see we are capitalized we have uh, profits we have more than a million of revenues growing to two million this year we are already in Dubai New York we are doing uh, activities there we are proven we have yeah, a lot of companies who are fans of us but why are we doing crowd investing not for the capital but for the ambassadorship yeah um of course you will see later on there are co-investors joining our banks joining so it's not a question of if we if we will be in or if we will be capitalized no it's more a matter of who is going to join us who is going to be an ambassador of Hercules and who is going to profit from our growth yeah so it's not a question if, if we will succeed it is going to succeed because we are succeeding now how are we going to grow yeah, because that is crucial, eh? because we're growing all over the world, and how are we doing that, in fact? So I'm, give you, I'm going to give you a little bit of an insight on how we do it, what's the catch. 
As you saw in the video, we have Hercules Trophy, our flagship product. We have Hercules Academy, yeah, where we are a well-being partner of very large companies, that was Coco, Allianz, KPMG, etc. We all help those guys with improving uh, engaged employers. We have Hercules projects where we make uh, custom-made projects uh, for large, large companies. And we have the Flare Games, which is the Hercules Trophy for ladies, yeah, which we also organize in Dubai, etc., etc. So we are active, in fact, if you look at this, that this is the corporate world in three main domains. Yeah, the typical domains where corporate people are investing to create more engaged employees. Yeah, they are investing in, okay, guys, you can join typical B2C sporty experiences like the marathon or the color run or whatever, and we will pay it for you. Yeah, you can join fancy B2B uh, VIP tickets at Tomorrowland or whatever other event, just like Hercules Trophy. Yeah, those are expensive things where you reward teams. Yeah. Oh, we can help you with well-being experts. Yeah, that's what we do. We have Sabine Appelmans working for us and many other top sport people who help companies uh, succeed uh, and create more engaged employees. And we also know about creating very large experiences. In fact, last week we, we did a, an event for 700 people for canoe on Dubai, in Dubai, on the island, uh, etc. So we're used to doing also very big events. So we're a very unusual company that doesn't come from the technology world. We come from the offline world, yeah. So we created a lot of uh, a lot of things, but in the meanwhile, without actually realizing it, because I'm a tech guy, I started building a platform since 1999 to support all these different businesses. Because I'm a lazy guy, and uh, I said, you know what? All these businesses should be supported by an amazing platform because all the people who join our events, in fact, they fill in all their details on our platform, so we can provide them with a great experience. In the meanwhile, the platform that is here has become pretty massive. There's a lot of features in there, and it has become a business as such. Yeah, It has become a new business. So now our business has changed. Of course, we are still organizing these amazing events, but we're now also selling our platform. So we're selling our platform to partners all over the world. We just released uh, yesterday the Czech Republic, the week before Romania, Next week we will launch Slovenia. So we sell, in fact, the platform with the concepts to local, let's say, sports agencies. It's those type of companies or team building agencies yeah, who take, in fact, our complete business. They get a full platform and they get the concepts with it so they can enter the B2B market, yeah? which is pretty unique because in the sports industry, the B2B market is very unknown. The sports industry is very good in B2C. So we provide them with a full platform and concepts. We're now even gonna take it a step further. We now get questions from our big customers, in fact, BNP, <laughs> who say, you know what, I also like your platform. We are, I don't know, 10,000 people, and even within our company, you need to help us organize all these different events, yeah? And then we will become like this, because all these companies, they, of course, do lots of things, and we like it that they do lots of things. They do the marathon and the color run and the flare games and the tough matter and the mobile too and whatever. Yeah, but they need the tools to organize this. And what you see in all those big companies, they lack the technology skills to build, in fact, the platform. Yeah, or they don't have the they don't have the priority, in fact, to do it because it would cost them too much to to, to implement this. So we just give them the platform, and we would tell them, okay, if you want to join the the 10 miles or the marathon, here's your pre-registration application on your intranet, do your pre-registration there, and then go to the 10 miles and book your tickets. Yeah. So yeah, that's what we're evolving to. So now you can feel how we can achieve the growth. Yeah. We are proven, but we also know how we can grow. It's not a matter of if we will grow, but how we grow. What is crucial to us is that we have a very, very strong network. We are a co-op, a cooperative entity, yeah, where we even involve all the partners that we have all around the world, American Cancer Society, CBS, Telenet, whatever, Real Madrid, they're all partners of ours, yeah, and they are all part of this cooperative thinking. They all say, Herculean is for us a great way to get into the B2B market, yeah? If we go through Herculean, Herculean is a trusted brand, it's better to go through them instead of starting my own B2B campaigns and trying to reach all those B2B people uh, in the market, all right? 
just to show you where we are already active. Yeah, so the orange dots, we are active there. We did events there. We are doing events there, so it's not a dream. Uh, and we're actively planning to go to all these, actually planning, yeah, so not like thinking about it, no, actually talking with people in those countries. And of course, one day, we want to do it on the North Pole. We have numbers, yeah, since 1999. I mean, you know, the guys from my micro invest got a bunch of numbers from us of 10 years. Yeah? And you can see our revenues, our gross margin. You can see 2012 was a pivot year because then we actually said, now we're going to take it global. So we did our first capital injection. We invested, and of course, you see it in the, in the results because we invested. But, because, but you see that, in fact, after one year, we, we already had a, a return on investment. So not a, a three-year thing, we did it in one year, we invested and we went back up. Overheads very low, etc. So why would you become an investor? I'm not going to ask you why would you invest. No, this is why would you become an investor and believe in Herculean dream and support us and tell everybody, hey guys, you should all join Herculean. Because we have a great governance structure, board of advice, board of uh, directors, uh, General Assembly, whatever, we have all the structures in place with all very um, smart people, yeah? Our board, of, our board of advice is all entrepreneurs, 50 plus, yeah? Very smart entrepreneurial people who come from very, very, very different industries and who bring their knowledge to the Herculean business, yeah? as we are a B2B product, of course. We, have, we are technology driven, which is all, always great. We are very diversified, different countries, different business units, and we have the Hercules Trophy, we have Hercules Project, and we have Hercules Academy. We are proven, we have thousands of fans. Ask anybody who joined the Hercules Trophy once, they will all say, oh, this is amazing, you should do it, it's, it's an amazing experience, it's like, it's like Tomorrowland for companies, it's that kind of feeling that we, that we create. Yeah? It's very scalable, as I mentioned, we have the platform, so it's very easy for us to scale up, because we just give a platform to a country, and they do it. And of course, we are Belgian. Yeah, and I'm not one of those guys who says, let's go to San Francisco and let's go for three million. No, I really want to, and I really mean that. It's my Gato Osoken in Flemish. I don't know the French word or the English word, but I really, really want to keep it in Belgium. If you look at the, the Belgian festivals, the Tora the, 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 the Tomorrowlands, etc., they are all sold to huh? the English or the Dutch or the whatevers. I really, really want to keep it here. And that's why we need ambassadors. That's why we need people like you who say, okay, I believe in this story, and I want to spread the word amongst the Belgians, and I want to be proud about the Belgian product, and not just chocolate and beer. I'm going to give, sorry, 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 I'm going to give you a very short preview on where we are already. So banks, two banks, have already confirmed that they will go for 500,000. Yeah, that will be uh, not equity, but a loan, yeah. We are in co-investment, we're probably going to overshoot it, so we should in fact uh, adjust the profile, but we are now already at 450,000 in co-investors, yeah? And equity crowd, as I said, the minimum of 50k, we're happy. If it's 300k, we're happy too, yeah? In, in the crowd, we really want as many people as possible who do 100 euro, 200 euro, 300 euro. We prefer that instead of people that say, okay, 5,000 euro, which is also great, of course. But we want to have as many people as possible in the crowd. So that's a different mindset. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have still another two minutes uh, for questions um, to Herculean. If any, one over there. So we have, uh, you have to register this time as a question asker. Okay, uh, as far as I understood, you are a matchmaking platform, right? So you're connecting the, the sports organizers with the companies who are in the team events who want to use their services. We focus on the... And, and my, my question is, when you expand, when you scale to the country, how do you do the marketing? How do you sell it in a certain country? Very simple. Um, so how do we go to market? In fact, Hercules Trophy is our Trojan horse. So we enter a new market with the Hercules Trophy. It's a festival, and we create trust with that event. So we start in Romania, for example, and we introduce the Hercules Trophy. It's like a regular festival. 
So we introduce it, we collect a lot of B2B data. Of course, we pick a partner first, and it's very easy because there are not 20 partners in a country who can do this. So it's a very, very small niche market. So you typically know, I go to Romania, okay, there are five players, in fact, in the market who can actually do this. You find them online. If you don't find them online, ooh, they have an issue. Eh? So we look for the partners, we contact them, we explain them our business, they sign in one month, two months. For, because for them, it's like a new niche and, and, and very simple, and they just have to follow a roadmap. You should know that in the sports marketing industry, it's a very different way of, of go-to-market. If you are a sports marketing company, and you win, for example, a, a big tennis tournament, which will come to your country, an ATP tournament, it's very simple. Congratulations, you won the name, yeah? You pay for it, good luck with the event, yeah? This is typically how it goes in, in sports marketing. It's very, very unprofessional. It's all on pen and paper. It's a little, a little bit of Excel, but there are not a lot of books. That's, yeah, FIFA, etc. is pretty far there, but there are not a lot of manuals on how to do it. We actually tell them, this is, this is where you pay. You don't pay a lot. We uh, charge you, by the way, a commission based on all the, tra all the transactions that go to our platform, and we will help you succeed, which is totally different from any other business model in sports. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. But unfortunately, we do not have the time for uh, the second question because time is running, but we are still actually on schedule. So thank you very much for that. Um, and for the last 15 minutes, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to have for you some testimonials from existing entrepreneurs having succeeded their um, crowdfunding campaign. And let's start with a very nice uh, business, uh, which is actually also one of my favorites, um, because they are actually very, um, very sensitive for uh, sustainable development and social responsibility. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Mia Zia. Bonsoir tout le monde, je ne sais pas si vous connaissez tous, mais il n'y a pas. Je ne sais pas s'il y a des chaussettes qu'il y a dans la salle, c'est bon. Les meilleures chaussures du monde. Donc euh, voilà, nous on est la compagnie réussie, c'était une, une superbe expérience avec une très très bonne équipe derrière, avec Grand Vest. Euh, Ria Zia, donc on est une marque de prêt-à-porter euh, accessoires féminins belges, dont les valeurs peuvent se résumer en couleur, voyage, savoir-faire et qualité, parce qu'on ne travaille que avec des petits ateliers qu'on connaît depuis 12, 13 ans. La marque aura bientôt 20 ans, mais nous on l'a racheté il y a 12 ans, et donc le travail euh, éthique est très important pour nous, euh, comme je vous dis, on travaille avec des ateliers familiaux. Alors, qu'est-ce que, pour résumer euh, la, la campagne, euh, il y a eu un, quand même un gros travail de préparation. C'était en avril, il y a plus d'un an. Ensuite, euh, la campagne de marketing a commencé en octobre. Ce qui a été juste compliqué, c'est que ben, nous, on a une boîte à faire tourner. Donc, il faut euh, en même temps s'occuper de la campagne et du détoulé. Donc ça a mis un peu plus de temps euh, que prévu et la, la campagne de pré la pré campagne a, a duré deux trois semaines ça s'est super bien passé on a eu euh, pas mal d'investissements de, de, de connaissances ensuite euh, pour vous dire, ben, la presse a été importante pour nous parce qu'on est une marque euh, belge et euh, il fallait pour, euh, pour, pour, pour attirer euh, attirer les gens, les investisseurs, le networking aussi, et euh, je ne sais pas euh, ce que je peux vous dire d'autre, mais en tout, en tout les cas, euh, pour, pour arriver au succès de la campagne, il a fallu euh, quand même euh, une énergie de notre équipe, de, de toute l'équipe d'ailleurs, et je pense que ça, Manipro Invest, on a bien fait comprendre, je ne sais pas, euh, vous ne devez pas juste mettre votre campagne en ligne et attendre euh, le critique et se dire que bon, demain, je vais faire un rôle, demain, je vais faire un rôle, non, il faut... Euh, voilà, il, faut, euh, il faut y aller, il faut prendre son téléphone, il faut, il faut expliquer pourquoi on est là, il faut expliquer aux gens pourquoi est-ce qu'on a besoin de fonds, forcément. Euh, il ne faut, il faut pas avoir peur de, 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 voilà, de, de remuer euh, si elle est faible et d'y croire surtout, parce que 
à un moment donné, c'est pas évident parce qu'on se dit est-ce qu'on est qu va arriver à l'objectif, puisque vous savez tous que l'objectif, s'il n'est pas atteint, la campagne est annulée, comme c'était. Et donc, euh, c'est quand même beaucoup plus sympa de réussir une campagne de crowdfunding. Donc voilà, on, a, on, a, on était à 56 000 euros, je crois. Oui, bah, nous, nous autres, c'est 50 000. Et donc, euh, bah, la deuxième partie, je suis encore occupée, donc vous voyez, un an après, quand même. Euh, voilà, c'est une, une grande étape dans la vie de l'IA. Donc, on doit trouver euh, des co-investisseurs. J'ai déjà un euh, qui, est, qui va nous accompagner. Et ce que je recherche surtout, moi, ce sont des gens euh, qui peuvent apporter les compétences que moi, je n'ai pas pour évoluer dans mon entreprise, en sachant que notre marque a bientôt 20 ans, mais qu'on a pris euh, il y a deux ans sous une nouvelle société et que l'objectif, c'est de donner un nouveau souffle à l'IA. Pour ceux qui connaissent ou pas, euh, la marque euh, peut paraître euh, un peu vieillotte. Et donc, l'idée, c'est de, de trouver euh, des compétences euh, que nous n'avons pas, donc que ce soit en digital, que ce soit en marketing, que ce soit en distribution. Et donc, j'ai déjà un co-investisseur, et je suis encore à la recherche du deuxième ou de la deuxième. Euh, pour euh, le deadline, comme je l'ai dit, avant lui tout, nous devons donc euh, atteindre. Euh, on va lever 110 000 euros, si j'ai bien les chiffres en tête. Donc, ce qui est pas mal, puisqu'on a un capital de 85 000 euros dans notre entreprise. Donc, on va dire, voilà. Euh, et pourquoi cet argent, vous allez me demander Donc, justement, pour, euh, pour faire une, euh, apporter ce nouveau souffle à l'IADIA, ce qu'on peut appeler euh, un nouveau storytelling. Tout ce qui est digital marketing, ben, je pense qu'on est dans le bon endroit pour savoir que un potentiel énorme. Donc aujourd'hui, j'ai un histoire dont je m'occupe pas vraiment et qui me rapporte quand même 60 000 euros par an. Donc si je commence peut-être à m'en occuper, eh bien on espère avec des compétences, avec des gens qui me, qui me guident, euh, il y a moyen de faire 4, 5, 10 fois plus. Euh, et donc c'est surtout un canal en plus aussi. Euh, donc ça, je l'ai mis, nouveau, nouveau site web. Évidemment, ben, je ne sais pas s'il y en a qui connaissent un peu le secteur de la mode, mais pour toucher des nouveaux marchés, il faut avoir des talents. Donc, on a l'habitude, hein, Paris, Tokyo, parfois la dixième fois dans, dans un mois à Tokyo. Il faut passer bah, du budget quand même pour un nouveau salon, il faut des idées, il faut, il faut de la créativité. Voilà. Et ensuite, euh, on fait Tranova Plan cette année, donc c'est aussi euh, des beaux projets en perspective, avec notamment no normalement la ville de Bruxelles, qui va nous soutenir. Euh, donc, voilà. <coughs> Merci. Um, and this is basically something very nice to invite your uh, Chinese or Japanese friends uh, in Europe. So please clap your hand for European residents. Bonjour à tous. Donc, pour quelques mots me concernant, je suis français. J'ai deux ans et demi. Et j'ai créé. Um, and uh, I've been living in, uh, in Belgium for two years hard, and I played the company in Europe where I was against one year ago. And um, it was not the, the, the best timing to create some travel agencies, because it was not a big year for tourism. But I had a simple idea, in fact, to take the best. Uh, um, to take the best of Airbnb, I choose. You all know Airbnb. Um, Airbnb is a standard for everyone. You take the, the best luxury apartment in the best European destination, everything on the same platform, and to add these, those apartments to a luxury tier service on the side. And I've been with welcoming people for five years in Paris, but my first job was managing luxury apartments in Paris. And I just realized that. It doesn't matter when, where you come from, Japan, China, or US, when you arrive in Paris or Brussels, you're lost. And you want to get access to a lot of travel activities, 
Why? Because transportation is getting very cheap. So people have a lot of money in pockets to, to do a lot of activities on site, to have more a low pocket area. So what I did, on the platform, I planned a space plan for the guests, and also the best apartments in the world. And I promised so this package to be asked because I've been learning Japanese for almost. And I know um, I'm specialized in Asian mobility to you all, and I'm, I'll be convinced that this will be the future. This will be a museum, and they will come to this So this was my confusion. So what I did, I had 15,000 euros in my pocket. I quit my company in one year. I was alone. Now we are six. I guess in charge of uh, the Chinese market. And um, we made 600,000 uh, sales in one year, despite the difficult year. And after, I decided to do my microinvest and to start the campaign. And the most important why I choose my microinvest because I truly think that I need money. We all need money to grow, obviously. But I need also people in my board to make me grow and to make the company grow. So the core financing strategy was probably the most relevant. Um, so we started the campaign on February 1st, and 10 days after we got 100k, the cost kick was fast. Um, I think for two main reasons. Um, the first one, my investors did a great job, you see. And your relationship with my investors is very important. If you believe in your project, you will succeed. Um, and the second reason is, obviously, the stack shelter um, is important. In fact, it makes people who hesitate to uh, more quick to, to take a decision. I don't think that big players, big investors will take consideration of it. It's a bonus. You don't invest for this, but you invest in the team, in the entrepreneur, in an idea. Um, so, um, so we reach 100k. Um, we need also uh, 100k from Business Angel. Two already confirmed that they will invest in that company. There is place for two other people. So, if you are interested, please feel free to, to contact me. So, ladies and gentlemen, the last presentation of the day um, is something very, very important for me. Um, I've been specialized in um, financing sustainable businesses for the last uh, maybe five to six years, and I know that one of the major issues is to deal uh, with um, actually the big garbage that um, we try to avoid um, in the you know in the, the retail market. Um, so here was a fantastic idea um, of a company called Eat Cheap, and they had a big success uh, with their um, crowdfunding campaign about proxy deal. Celui qui viendra acheter son pilier américain à moins 50%, et bien il y aura de fortes chances qu'il qu sorte aussi un magasin avec une baguette ou des crudités, qui aura payé le prix plein, qui son palier. Et donc, ça, c'est évidemment très intéressant pour le commerçant. Alors, euh, donc, tout ça va générer un nouveau chiffre d'affaires pour le commerçant, sur le marchandise qui était normalement perdu. Alors, côté consommateur, et bien évidemment, on offre une large gamme euh, de nombreuses réductions sur une euh, large gamme de produits, et surtout en fonction des préférences de consommation. C'est-à-dire qu'on inclut dans la plateforme, enfin, sur la plateforme, 
une partie filtre qui permettra, dans un exemple classique, aux végétariens de retirer toutes les promotions entrées sur la viande. Mais d'un côté, la personne qui va être ajoutée que les promotions en disant sur le sushi, mais elle pourra le sélectionner dans sa préférence de consommation et être un motif de, de ses produits préférés. Et bien sûr, sans oublier le côté environnemental, donc, euh, euh, avec ces plateformes euh, ainsi bien sur la lutte contre le gaspillage alimentaire, pour le moment, tout le monde a entendu, chez les commerçants et contre le volume des déchets. Alors, je vais, au euh, début, on sait que euh, on a très vite identifié un besoin en cash pour accélérer notre croissance. Parce qu'on revient avec une idée sur le marché de Il faut très vite conquérir les parts de marché pour être connu. Il y aurait plusieurs possibilités, soit de faire des tournées sur des business angels, soit de choisir les formes. Alors, comme l'a dit Yves et euh, plusieurs autres de nos entrepreneurs, euh, on a besoin de cash et là on a la possibilité d'avoir des ambassadeurs. Alors, ce que nous, euh, on veut, c'est les ambassadeurs, mais aussi les supporters. D'ailleurs, je pense qu'ils sont là. C'est, euh, outre le fait d'être ambassadeur, savoir qu'on est en entrepreneur, c'est une lourde tâche quotidienne de croire en une idée qui peut-être va marcher. Alors, évidemment, on est sûr qu'elle va marcher. Mais avoir une communauté de supporters tous les jours euh, derrière soi, c'est vraiment une valeur ajoutée bien plus grande que, que le cash qu'elle représente. Et euh, il y a quelque chose que, qu'on n'avait pas imaginé au départ, je voudrais de terminer là-dessus et insister là-dessus, euh, qui est assez génial, qui remet une pression supplémentaire sur les gens. Mais quand on a un deal avec un proche qui décide de venir via un micro-invest, un actionnaire via le crawl, 